And we begin tonight with breaking news. The New York Times is reporting that Mark Meadows, former chief of staff, has testified before the federal grand jury hearing evidence in special counsel Jack Smith's investigations. It's not clear when Meadows testified or which part of the investigation he was asked about. But this is a significant development. Quoting from the Times, Meadows was around for pivotal moments leading up to and after the 2020 election as Trump plotted to stay in office and thwart Joe Biden from being sworn in to succeed him. Some of them were described in hundreds of text messages that Meadows turned over to the House Select Committee that investigated the January 6th attack at the Capitol before he decided to stop cooperating. Those texts served as a roadmap for House investigators. But Meadows also has insight into efforts by the National Archives to retrieve roughly two dozen boxes of presidential material that officials had been told Trump took with him when he left the White House in January 2021. Meadows was one of Trump's representatives to the archives, and he had some role in trying to discuss the matter with Trump, according to two people briefed on the matter. This development comes as we are learning new details about the classified documents case and how another grand jury in Florida is also hearing from witnesses. The New York Times reports there are indicator or indications that the Washington grand jury may have stopped hearing witness testimony in recent weeks, according to three people familiar with its workings. As for the Florida grand jury, which began hearing evidence last month, only a handful of witnesses have testified before it or are scheduled to appear. At least one witness has already testified there, and another is set to testify on Wednesday. The Times also reports that among those who have appeared before the D.C. grand jury in the past few months or have been subpoenaed by it are more than 20 members of Trump's Secret Service security detail. Earlier today, NBC News exclusively caught the special counsel on video for the first time, who unsurprisingly remained tight-lipped. Is an indictment coming soon, sir? Is an investigation wrapping up, sir? Trump, in the meantime, is doing the complete opposite. Lashing out on his fake Twitter social media site, calling the investigation election interference, and even referring to the DOJ and the FBI as Marxists and fascists. While on Capitol Hill, his cronies are once again lining up to do the former president's legal bidding at taxpayer expense. Today, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan sent a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland demanding an unredacted copy of the memorandum outlining the scope of Mr. Smith's probes regarding President Trump and any supporting documentation relating to his appointment as special counsel. This is all coming to a head, right, as the 2024 campaign is getting underway. And while in any normal universe, a potential federal indictment would be the nail in the coffin for a presidential candidate, for Trump, it's actually causing Republican lawmakers to double down on their support, which should come as no surprise, considering they didn't flinch during his two impeachments, a Capitol insurrection, his arrest in New York for paying off a porn star and being found liable for sexual abuse. Republicans are standing by their man, even as more and more candidates are jumping into the Republican race. Tomorrow, former VP Mike Pence, who's Trump's followers at the Capitol riot, wanted to hang is expected to formally announce his bid for the White House. And any moment now, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie will officially launch his presidential campaign, in which he appears to be the only Republican candidate who's actually willing to take on the twice, imbe twice impeached, once indicted, found liable for sexual abuse, former president. Donald Trump made us smaller by dividing us even further and pitting one group against another, different groups pitted against different groups every day. And by definition, making those groups smaller. Joining me now is George Conway, conservative lawyer and Washington Post contributing columnist. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, good to have you here, Mr. Conway. So ABC News is reporting now that Mark Meadows um, answered questions about both potential Jack Smith cases, election interference and classified documents. Your thoughts? That's very, very significant. And if he is cooperating with uh, Mr. Smith and the Justice Department and the FBI, that's a very bad sign yeah. for Donald Trump, particularly in the January 6th investigation, where he was really the gatekeeper uh, in keeping, in, in, with, 
with respect to communications to Trump, where people were trying to get through to Trump and say, Trump, you have to say something, Mr. Mr. Right. President. You have to say something. He was the he was the guy who was basically opening and closing the door and, and talking to Trump, including, and he was the one who got, I think, Ivanka to come down mm-hmm. to talk to the to her father. Uh, he was basically, you know, Grand Central Station that yeah. day. And if there's anyone who could you know, it could shed light on Trump's state of mind, what he did, what he didn't do. Uh, it, it's Mark Meadows. And that's a very, that's got to be a very, very disturbing thing for Donald yeah. Trump. So yesterday um, we learned of this other grand jury. There's a right. Florida grand jury now. There's a Washington grand jury. The Washington grand jury is going to re-up uh, on Wednesday and hear witnesses. We know just a couple of people have gone down in Florida. Do you have any sense um, as, you know, given your background as a prosecutor, given just all the things that you've heard, of whether or not you can tell whether the Jack Smith process is has a more ripe sort of conclusion in the documents case or in the January 6th case, because the Meadows uh, testimony suggests to me that that part of it actually isn't dead. And I think a lot of people had been focusing just on documents. I'm going to disclaim being a prosecutor. I'm sorry. I did some 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 white collar. Well, you promoted me. (laughs) I I did some white collar defense in in, in my lifetime. But I think that it's pretty clear that the, the documents investigation is approaching the end. I mean, you can just feel it by the t- number of leaks that are occurring. And yeah. what happens in these investigations is that defense lawyers share information because they, my guy went into the grand jury and wants to know before he goes in what your guy said. So right. I'm talking to you as, a, as fellow lawyers, and they all share information and it all gets passed around. And when you reach the late stages of a very large investigation like this, There are lots and lots of people who know basically what has been told to the grand jury and to uh, the FBI and and the prosecutors outside the grand jury. And they know this and they're free to talk about it, um, unlike the prosecutors or the grand jurors themselves. So uh, that's why we see a lot of these leaks coming out. And the fact that Trump's lawyers went in there yesterday and went right. into the Justice Department to meet with, with, with presumably Jack Smith and maybe the head of the criminal division. I don't know who they met with, but um, it, it's, that shows you that they are near the end of the line. And, and when you think about the timing of it, uh, you know, if you want to try a case before you want to bring a case before the election season starts, and you certainly want to try it before the election actually happens, sure. um, your best shot at doing that is to bring that case now in the yeah. next few weeks. I mean, James Comey uh, said that you know Trump could be wearing an ankle bracelet uh, while he's accepting the Republican convention. I mean, the idea That's of having right. this running I into... Agree with Comey, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean... The, 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 You're right. So the fact that you do have this Florida grand jury um, and the Washington grand jury, it, there, there is this is from the New York Times. They said that there are two possibilities that are suggested by the fact of these two grand juries. One is that the investigation in Washington is largely complete and prosecutors are now poised to make a decision about bringing charges um, there while still weighing other potential indictments in Florida. The other is that Mr. Smith has decided that Florida is the proper venue for any charges he might bring in the case and has moved the entire grand jury proceeding there. And, you know, sort of the theory of the case is that the alleged crime, at least the documents part of took place at Mar-a-Lago. Right. Do you have a sense of, of yeah. which of those seems more real? I, I don't, I, I wouldn't hazard a guess. I mean, but the fact is, right, the Sixth Amendment requires that uh, criminal defendants be tried before juries from the state and the district in which the crime is committed. And so that's, that's an interesting question. For yeah. Trump, it's an interesting question because he did a lot of obstruction in Florida, sure. but the obstruction was directed at people in Washington. Yeah. And um, and so it could be that they decided that the, that the low risk route is that to, to bring the, the case in Florida or to bifurcate it and take sure. it, which is what they did with the Manafort situation. They had a case in the Eastern District across the river, Eastern right. of Virginia, and a case here in the District of Columbia. Or it could be that you know, a maintenance person at Mar-a-Lago went into the uh, FBI's field office in Miami <laughs> and lied his butt off, and, and they want to bring some standalone 1001 charges, and they got to do it before that grand so they might want to We don't know. Else, we right? don't actually know. We won't know until we actually see these indictments, how they pleaded the indictments, and how, you know, and, and how, how what position they're taking on venue. Um, the, the Mark Meadows figures in one of the more recent revelations about uh, Donald Trump's handling or mishandling of those classified documents. He's at Bedminster in New Jersey, yeah. and he's giving uh, an interview, and this is regarding Mark Meadows' book. Yeah. And he's uh, waving a piece of paper, which we don't know what that piece of paper Hear was. It on the, it saying, on the tape, I guess. This proves Mark Milley is a liar. This yeah. proves General Milley is a, is a liar. It, could it be that the interviews, and we don't know when they took place, we know they're about both, 
are because Mark Meadows is considered a witness or is he in any way potentially in any legal trouble himself? Well, because he did participate, as you said, in January 6th. I, I, I think he has some exposure potentially for January 6th because he was participating in these calls. I think he was participated in the Raffensperger call, if I remember correctly. He he was you know, passing on directions to people to do things on behalf of Trump, such as I, I think he may have had some involvement in the fake electors. I don't remember for, from all the, all the hearings right. from last so many summer. Things. But, but yeah, I think he may have some exposure there, which means he really does have an incentive to cooperate there. I don't know whether he has exposure in the documents case. Sure. But in, at all events, if you're going to cooperate with the government, you have to cooperate all the way. Yeah. They don't take they don't take part way. And he can't do what he did with the January 6th committee, which yeah. was refused to cooperate. Correct. She simply knocked on the door. The woman shot her through the closed door with her son, nine years old, standing next to her. The N-word, slaves, other profanity, B-words, you name it. This was not the first incident. This has happened numerous times. That was the mother of Ajika A.J. Owens, who, along with family and friends, is demanding the arrest of the white neighbor who shot and killed her daughter, apparently over a dispute involving the victim's children. The shooting occurred in Ocala, Florida, this past Friday night, with very few answers coming from Marion County Sheriff Billy Woods, who has since framed the incident as a longtime neighborhood feud. This characterization of a feud has been picked up by the media, of course. But, as is often the case, there is much more to the story. And according to friends and witnesses, the sheriff's framing is inaccurate. The case puts stand-your-ground laws back into the spotlight as investigators determine whether Florida's shoot-first law applies to a case involving a black woman ringing a doorbell and getting shot through a closed door. Four days since Owens' death, the shooter's identity has not yet been released. A.J. Owens was the mother of four children, who you see here. Isaac, age 12, Israel, age 9, Africa, age 7, and Titus, who is just three years old. Joining me now is someone who knew these children and who witnessed the aftermath of the shooting, Phyllis Willis, Phyllis Wills, I'm sorry, and her son, Kingston. They are neighbors of A.J. Owens. Thank you both for being here. Um, and Phyllis, um, I really appreciate you being here. So, I want to start uh, just by asking you um, where you live in proximity to where this took place and in proximity to the shooter. I live right across the street from the shooter. And I could um, literally walk out my door in her apartments right there. Okay. And this field where the kids were playing is in between your home and where the shooter lives. Is that correct? The field is across the street from my home. Her apartment is directly across the street from my home. Now you said so her apartment. The field, oh, go on. Correct. Go on. It, we live in we live in an apartment complex. So gotcha. the field is in between her home and another another uh, quadruplex. So you were able to see the aftermath of what, of what happened. Could you hear what happened as well? I did not hear what happened. I was serving dinner to my kids. Um, uh, her son, I have on video, banged on my door really loud. And I was like, what in the world? Like, he banged so loud. And I opened the door, and he was gasping for air. And he's like, please, somebody help me. Call 911. My mom's been shot. As soon as he told me that his mother was shot, I already knew who shot her because... I mean, there there would be only one person out here that's been just so nasty to everybody. Tell me about that. The lady is just not all there in the head. She's really nasty to the children. She's really nasty. She's She throws racial slurs to the kids. Um, she, you know, she tells them if they don't get off their property, she's told my daughter that she was going to be raped. Um... She said a lot of nasty stuff. She's called him retarded. She's, you know, done all types of stuff. We've made numerous police reports on this lady about her and the way that she talks to our children. 
and nothing has been done. And were you surprised, given the fact that, as you said, that she has menaced and bullied the children before, that she was not arrested and charged? I'm very surprised. I'm really more hurt than anything. Do you do you trust the sheriff in this town? I do not trust him at all. Why? Because he, you know, he could have already made an arrest. If it was the other way around, she would have already been in jail. And do you mind if I ask Kingston a question? Would that be okay? Go ahead. So Kingston, how are you, cutie? Um, I understand. I'm good. Okay, I understand that you are best friends with Isaac. Is he your good friend? Yeah. Well, I um, I understand that he was a hero. That he um, tried to call nine one one, and he was very heroic that day. Do were, did you ever experience? The, the lady um, that your mom is talking about being mean to, to you and your, your friends? Yes. What kind of stuff did she do? She, she would always come outside and, like, tell us to get off her property, and she would just cuss at us and flick us off. Mom, let me ask you, you this question. Um, you know, there is this story about her talking about her property. Does she own the apartment complex? None of us own anything. We lease. So where she is a renter. Is, where, the field where the kids play, they play on the other side of the field. The field is so big. They play on the whole other side that's not even close to her apartment. She just intentionally would come out. Every time she would see the children out, she would intentionally come out her door to antagonize the children every single time. And um, she'd come did you out know she record the kids. She would record them. She would cuss at them, call them names. She would sit in her truck and turn her radio up really loud so that they would, you know, not yeah. want to hear it and annoy them. She would beep their horn. She would like lay on her horn in her truck for a long period of time to try to startle the kids. You know, at one point she showed my daughter, there was the children were out there in the field and she waved a gun at them for them to get off of the field. She's done so many things, so many things to these kids. Wow. Let me ask you one last question. And I want to ask a question about AJ. Um, did you know her well? And what was she like? She was amazing. She was amazing. She was a great mother to her kids. She always went to work and came straight home to her kids. When she came outside with her children, she would throw football with not only her kids, but all of the kids. She encouraged my son to sign up for football and I couldn't take him because I'm working. So she went and signed him up herself and took him to football practice and all that stuff. She's amazing. And what do you want to see happen next? I want justice. I want to see this lady in jail. She's a monster. Well, I appreciate uh, you coming. We all up here appreciate you coming down and telling us what you saw and know. Last question. Have the police interviewed you? Briefly, but not really. Um, I maybe got one or two questions and that was it. Like even the night that that she passed away. They never, you know, they never came around interviewing anybody. It was, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just not right. Well, I, I will note that the legacy of Stand Your Ground in this country, um, and I will quote from The Guardian, the legacy of Stand Your Ground is this Wild West mentality that everything can be resolved with guns, said law professor Thaddeus, Thaddeus Hoffmeister. Kenneth Nunn, a law professor, added, all you have to say is I was in fear for my life and no charges will be brought. I think a lot of police officers believe that, too, and are not arresting people for shooting folks. Um, it is horrible. It happened to Ralph Yarl, shot um, through a door, and it's now happened to A.J. Owens. It is unjust. And we're going to keep following this story. Phyllis Wills and uh, Kingston, my friend, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you.